and welcome to the Polo Series from the Singapore Polo Club. I'm Andira Lalwani and with me Mohit Lalwani, a very special day today. Mohit, it is a day of the Melbourne Cup over in Australia and we can see a hint of it here in Singapore, can't we? Yes, we certainly can. It's a super event here at the Singapore Polo Club where they've actually put this event together for Australians who are living here uh, to create a connect with the race that stops a nation. 24 horses and a polo match with a lot of other activities through the day. Absolutely right. A race that stops the nation, you said. Well, it's safe to say that it's certainly stopped quite a few here in Singapore. Well, I've got Stein Wilkers with me, the acting polo captain. Stein, uh, look, Tuesday, it's the day that uh, race does stop a nation. Mm. But you're recreating that in Singapore, aren't you? Yes, we, we tried to make it a celebration uh, for the Australians here in Singapore. So we recreated a, a small race, although uh, horse versus, uh, versus motorcycle here. And then as part of the, the, the horse theme, we were doing a polo match and a dressage display. So yeah, we've recreated in that sense. And the game, it's, well, it's going to be fun, but it's an exhibition game, isn't it? It's essentially an exhibition game. Normally our tournaments have a three or a four day run up. For this one day event, um, we just basically asked members to sign up as teams. So whoever wanted to play at, at a certain uh, level could sign up as a team. So we have two teams who signed up to participate today in the event. So those two teams will, uh, will fight equally hard for the win, I'm sure. Well, that's right. Competition is competition, isn't it? And well, what's unique is the coming together of two different equine sports, uh, horse racing and polo. Well, I've never seen that before. Well, you know, we're a polo club, so obviously uh, that's the way we can celebrate um, the race. And uh, we showed the race here uh, on television for everybody to celebrate. And it's, it's just a unique location to be to celebrate uh, an event. And since we can keep it in the horse team, polo has also played a lot in Australia. So the Australians are enjoying that just as much, I should hope. Well, they certainly are. And, well, we're expecting a fun game, but a competitive one, as Stein says. The Melbourne Cup saw 24 runners go into the starting gates for the race and the favourite was last year's runner-up. Well, the race and much more was on tap for all those that were a part of this day. Anticipation and excitement were palpable with seconds to go before the Melbourne Cup. The richest two-mile handicap in the world and a race that stops the nation. However, here at the Polo Club, this was a race that made sure there was plenty to celebrate, well, win or lose. Spirits were high all around with plenty of champagne and before people started slipping into the comfort zone of watching and cheering polo, there was a plethora of engagements to keep them on their toes. There was even a horse versus bike race, well, which this gorgeous creature ended up winning. It's all about Australia at the Polo Club today. And for a race that literally stops a nation, it was only fitting that Park Regis came on board as the title sponsor. Mohit Lalwani caught up with Jason Dowd of the Park Regis group to find out more about this connect. Well, I've got Jason with me of Park Regis and Park Regis are, of course, platinum sponsors of this event which is on Melbourne Cup Day. So, you know Melbourne Cup Day, it's a horse race. We are at a polo a club out here. What's the association and for you especially? For us especially, um, we're a privately owned Australian company. So the uh, aspect of a Melbourne Cup to, to us, we relate to it quite well. Normally, um, if we were back home, we wouldn't be working today. We'd be uh, t taking it easy and uh, watching the big race. So we decided that uh, synergy with the Polo Club, uh, some other events we've sponsored and we, then we thought we would uh, sponsor the Melbourne Cup Day and make it a yearly event. And it looks superb, doesn't it? I, you know, everyone's had a lot of fun. A bit of a flutter on the horses as well? Yeah, look, um, the uh, favourite got up and won, so it was good to see Gay get up. So yeah, it's a great day and it's, it's a great race. So. And you personally enjoy Polo, clearly, because this is not the first time I've seen you here. Yeah, look, I'm, uh, I, I love to come along and watch. It's, uh, it's uh, just relaxing. It gets you out of the office and it, it's a good event. There's good people and uh, good networking. Well, Jason, I'm going to let you get on with the day. Enjoy the champagne and, well, enjoy the polo as well.
Ali, well, it's a big day in Australia. You're sitting out here. Uh, but an event like this, what does it mean for you? Oh, I, I've been up here for a long time and travel all around the world. But at any time that that, that, ra that race is on, you you stream these days. Of course, you can be linked or you, some, somehow you find some Australians and watch the race. And it was a great, great race. Uh, in fact, the argument now is that it stops the world because there are so many international horses uh, part of that part of that race and uh, yeah it's a, always a great event it's part of the Aussie culture no doubt how are you enjoying your polo I oh, love loving it absolutely loving it well on that note the players are mounting their horses let's head straight over to the very first chucker it's game on and so Park Reaches Australia versus Park Reaches the rest of the world for Park Reaches Australia Mark Hogberg Ali Reda the captain Jerry Gann and Isabel Lauren Audi and for the rest of the world, Wakas Khan, Stein Welkers, Lawrence Kong the captain, and Melissa Ko. He plays and that's what penalties are for. The ball's in play. We have seven minutes of the first of four chuckers underway now. First of that, coming through is Mark Hoberg. Picks it up nicely on the paint pony. There's the ride off from Wakas Khan. Push forward, push forward, push Marco Berger's pushing push it through the pony's legs. He keeps it on his offside. That's the right hand side. This is about the only sport I know, except for field hockey, where it's illegal to be a left handed player. There's Jerry Gann going for the next shot towards goal, but it's just wide. One weighs the flag down. No goal. We have a hit in from the back line in favour of the purple team of the rest of the world. Four chuckers. Each chucker is a period of seven minutes. So we have the clock over there to count it down. At seven minutes, the bell goes. If the ball's still in play, we play on for another 30 seconds or until the ball goes dead. So, a little bit picked up here. Isabel Leronardi. Isabel going to slam it onto the board to cut it round. She does so nicely. She's going to have to pick that up on the near side now. It's a hard shot. Ali Rader tries to get onto it, but the whistle goes from Potter Elpendi. The narrowest angle has the most right away to that ball. So does a player coming down the other side of that line. Anybody who crosses it or comes in at a more and more oblique angle, the less and less right they have to it. And it's that simple, ladies and gentlemen, except the line of the ball changes every time it's hit. And there's Bakas Khan. He just picks it up off the opponent's stick. Really good chance for goal now. He doesn't need to do anything dramatic. Just needs to run it through. That's a goal. That's the first goal now to Park Regis, rest of the world in purple. Bakas Khan, the youngster, 16 years old, I think he is. Off we go. First of that, Jerry Gann bursts through the back. Four whites, Melissa Coe is going to get there first, but she's, yep, she's stuck patiently with it. Isabel gets off the ball. Backed by Lawrence Kong, but only as far as another white player. That's Mark Hoberg, backing it, trying to pick up, and does Jerry Gann. Jerry, wearing number two, he's on the charge now. Swings, misses. Picked up well by Ali Rader, supporting him. Swings, misses himself. Over. No, Elizabeth Laranaudi just taking it off to the side. She needs to keep it in play. She does so well. The whistle goes though. So he stops. We wait for the umpires to side the penalty offence. So Mark Hoberg walks up to the ball now. The defending team behind the goal mouth. He just has to lay his stick on it and it trickles through. Very nice equalising goal for Park Regis Australia. One goal apiece. Wakas does it in the end. Another three player. The rest of the world through those 11 inch high boards which just keep play flowing just a reminder that the play is not confined only to within the boards ponies do can and will come across the boards this side of the sand trap is the limit ladies and gentlemen particularly if you have youngsters here it's not a sand pit That's a beautifully taken shot, and that's a wonderful looking goal as it disappears into Mount Pleasant Road. Screech of brakes. No, we're clear. And that's two goals to one now. Rest of the world leads Australia. With Jerry Gann now. Melissa trying to get there, trying to get the ride off. Jerry's still nursing it on his offside, takes it upfield. There goes Melissa trying to get the ride off. Jerry pushes her hard. He's still got it, he's got a chance for goal, he's got the angle now, and that looks pretty good from here, but uh, Barry Boffey says, no, nope, that was going wide. Good work from Lawrence, he's stuck to him. Wakas 
Gun turns it, just taps it round. Going to take it on towards that goal. He's got attention there from Mark Oberg. Uh, whistle goes from the spot where the penalty is awarded. Which just tap it in, roll it through. He's not going to miss this one, ladies and gentlemen. That's a nice, easy goal for Wakas Gun. Puts him again on the score sheet. Three goals to one now. Rest of the world lead Australia. Here, 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 Jerry Gann just tries to get his pony going, but Stein's there first, he comes through, there's Mark Oberg, stick in the air, Lawrence Gong there, nobody's moving, now he puts his stick down, tries to get it, and he gets it. Mark Oberg there, moving upfield, Lawrence Gong, trying to get back on terms. First that, Ali Raider picks it up for White, moving it infield nicely, that's a good bit of pick up from Ali. Oh, he's got a bit of attention there from Stein, Walkers in front of him, whistle goes. Sorry Stein. This time looks exactly the reverse opportunity from almost exactly the same spot, this time for White. Steinwalker's interfering with play there, penalty's blown against him. Ali Raider there. Plays goal, taps it, he's not going to make a mistake surely. And it's through the goal, that's a, a nice one back for Park Regis Australia, two goals to three they trail. Pony, Lawrence Kong comes up, he's going to get there first. Backs it well, but well met there by Ali Raider. Oh, stolen off his stick by Wakas Khan. Very quick work, he needs to just get the angle. He can do this, it's gonna go in, isn't it? Yes, it has indeed. Lovely little just dink at the end, just to get the angle. Another fine goal from young Wakas Khan. Four goals to two now. The rest of the world lead Australia. Stein, into midfield for Purple. Well met by Mark Ovo, trying to get it out of trouble. And there's the first bell. There'll be another one in 30 seconds. Or up. I think the whistle's gone. So we'll see. Well, on that note, it's time for a short break. We'll be back at the Singapore Polo Club right after this. Don't go anywhere. Thank you for staying with us here on the Polo Series. Now the Melbourne Cup is one of the most anticipated race days all over the world, as much for top class racing as for the uber glamorous event it's become. We got to see a slice of it in Singapore at the Park Regis Melbourne Cup day. Hats, dresses and shoes of gorgeous hues and styles were on display at the Singapore Polo Club. After all, it was the day of the Melbourne Cup and after all, up for grabs was the award for the best dressed person. The ladies got their creative hats on and the end result was an impeccably dressed turnout. And just in case someone needed some bling in their outfit or a sparkle of inspiration, Ellie Sakuski was at hand with an array of stunning clothes and one-of-a-kind jewels. My brand is about things that are easy and uh, fun and uh, style statement pieces, yes. It's just a, such a great day for people who are involved in polo and not involved in polo to come along and get dressed up and enjoy a great day. You have to wear a flat sole on your shoe, whether it's high or low. You're, when you're treading in, you, you have to wear a flat shirt, no stilettos. Um, and I think comfort and something glamorous is great. The men weren't that far off. In between topping up their glasses of champagne and cheering on the polo players, they lined up to get fitted for bespoke shirts by Victor York. Cheering among the 200 guests in the exclusive enclosure was Miss Universe Singapore, Rachel Kam. Tell me a little bit about how the day has been for you and what the experience has been like. Uh, it's great because I was sitting right at the uh, commentator box, so that I got a really good view of, uh, of, of the polo, polo match, so yeah, I enjoyed myself. Okay, you're looking lovely, of course, and tell me a little bit about your outfit and how you put it all together. I'm wearing Kukai Australia, so, well, since it's the Melbourne Cup, I thought maybe I'll uh, support an Australian brand. Um, I haven't, I actually got this dress a few years ago, so I thought, yeah, I haven't worn this in a long time, I'll just wear it today. And how you put your outfit together, your handbag, your shoes, you know? Yeah, I think, uh, well, the handbag matches uh, part of my outfit, this... Uh, it's like a fuchsia colour, it matches it, and then, you know, I, I just thought it'll go well with the gold and a bit of the brown and, yeah, the fuchsia colour. Lovely. Yeah. 
Also, you know, what according to you, or what do you like most about watching polo? Um, I really like the sound of the horses galloping. So uh, yeah, that that's that's fun, and also I like the whole atmosphere. People cheering for their own teams. That's that's the, that's a good part. However, when it came to being the best dressed person, it was this lady's out of the box creativity that landed her the grand prize with Ellie doing the honors. The tribal hat, and I bring them in from Indonesia. And the outfit is basically a beautiful piece of fabric that I fell in love with and I had it made up into a dress. But I've also got one of those gorgeous bracelets on, so it just felt like it all was brought together. You know, I was so impressed with Jo because she chose something that was really out of the box. You know, everybody was the fascinators, the feathers, and we can get them everywhere now. And I really liked the style that Jo put together. I really, really did. I thought it was awesome. The score is 4-2 for the rest of the world. Let's get back to the game. Chakas 3 and 4. That's next. Picked up well then by Wakas Khan. The turn play for Purple. Wakas sets off upfield. Good hook shot from Mark Hoberg there. Just hooked his stick as the whistle goes. That's a nice hard, but it was a bit left. Red drive, taking somebody's head off if they're in the way. Yet you have right to that line, but I suspect you're so far ahead of the pursuing players. You've got the benefit of the doubt there, so no foul called. Wakaskan, though, he knocks it upfield. First back's going to be Mark, Marco Berg. Nice near side backhand attempt, but he doesn't really get it. Ali does. Nicely done. Who's there for White? It's nobody. Wakas is going to be there first. Cuts it round, whistle goes as Jerry Gann. And galloping down, I'm sure he was claiming was the line of the ball. Andy Rayner also back on the field. Mark just circles his pony, gets it comfortable, gets it collected on the right leg. Winds up, lost one nicely. That looks a very nice hit to me. It is indeed. Wang has his flag up with vim and vigor. A goal to Whites, four goals to three now. That's it, get behind your teams. Wakas sneaks straight through. Oh, took his eye off it. Awkward bouncing ball though. Nice shot from Ali Raider to set up Mark Hoberg. Mark Hoberg is on a charge now. On his way downfield, he's clear of the field. He doesn't need to go too fast. He just needs to be careful. And actually, that's, he's just put it wide. Great opportunity. But uh, Wakas is back there. So is Stein. Wakas takes it upfield. Ali Raider's there on his near side. Awkward bouncing ball. Stein Wilkers. Leaps on it. There goes the ride off. That's totally legal. You can push the opposing player off. Well played by Ali. Stuck to it well, but Wakas has got another fine opportunity here. He just taps it along. One more hit's all he needs. Get people out of the way. That's the opportunity. It's a goal to Wakas Khan. Five goals to three now. Rest of the world lead Australia. Lawrence is well hooked there by Marco Berg, but Stein Welkers onto it quickly, sets Lawrence up again. There's a good hard ride off there coming from Marco Berg, and he also gets the back shot. Met by Stein. Wakas picks it up on the near side. Now he has it on his offside, moving it in towards the goal mouth. But the first to that is going to be the white player. That's Marco Berg taking it out of danger of a fine hit. He sets off in pursuit with Lawrence Kong chasing him down. Another lovely drive along upfield from Mark. Australia now trying to apply some pressure. Nicely played, he's got support following him. It's brought it in field, he's going to wait now for team captain Ali Raider to take it forward. It's rolling the right way for White. Can anybody just put it over the line? Back goes Mark, he's going to have to get an interesting angle on the back shot there. It's there with Jerry, chance for Jerry Gann now. It's right in front of goal. Isabel Laranodi has a chance. It's 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 still there. And a whistle must have gone in the hubbub there. In whose favour? Whites are retreating. In favour of purples. Desperate moment for them. But they're gonna have the chance to clear. Players, spurs are optional. As Lawrence Kong picks up that pass from the back. Lawrence for Purple. They all want to just keep it buried up that end of the field for the next few minutes. And I'm sure Ali Raider has other ideas. He gets a bit of the back shot. First of that's going to be Wakas. He reaches right out of the saddle on the near side to pick it up. 
Isabel giving him a little bit of hard attention there, trying to pick it up herself. It's going the right way for White at the moment. Mark Hoper steps over the boards to pick it up. There's Ali Radar shouting for it, but uh, Mark hadn't really got control of it at that point. Now he has. That's a lovely pass upfield. Who's going to get that first? Melissa Coe is going to get that first. No, she's not. Jerry does. Jerry for White for Australia. Jerry's on the charge now. Where's he going? Ali Raider. Oh, he misses it. Oh, there's a great chance for Mark Hoberg now. Got in a little bit of a divot, I think. There. Pick, difficult to pick out. Mark has one more stroke for it. Goes to the next shot. And it goes wide. Maybe got a ricochet. That's why. So another. He still has it. He's moving it through the field well. Avoiding the attentions. And I think I heard a whistle. Wakaskan just following his own line of ball all the way down. It must have been his right away. He turns. And he scores. Yet another goal for Wakaskan. Off we go. The whistle goes, the bell goes, and that's the final score. Park Regis, rest of the world team in Australia, run out very deserved winners over the very hard fighting Park Regis Australia with three goals, six goals to three. Purple beat the Whites in a very entertaining exhibition match on this Park Regis Melbourne Cup afternoon on Tuesday, 5th of November. Well done, Vakas. Tell me, take me through the game, you know, what was going through your head and of course you also were the most valuable player. Well, it was a superb game actually. We had a good fun. Um, all my players worked really hard and the horses were brilliant and it was just very well organized. The tournament was great and uh, it was a great turn up so everyone enjoyed themselves and uh, I think um, uh, we played hard and we deserved to win so we, we got the prize and we are very happy about that. Well, it's been a wonderful season here at the Singapore Polo Club. We will be back next year in 2014 with all the best polo from the Singapore Polo Club.